here we go. Well, welcome to the Rising Stars podcast, where we unpack trends and tips in the point of sale space and IT channel industry. My name is Kate Arara, and I'm the Partner Development Manager at Star Myconics America. I've worked in the channel for almost 18 years, and I've met some fascinating people along the way. My goal for this podcast is to connect you with some of the most influential people in the channel space to provide you insight and inspiration to help your business succeed. Today's guest is someone who many in the channel should be quite familiar with. Jim Roddy is the president and CEO of the Retail Solutions Providers Association, or RSPA, North America's largest community of resellers, software developers, vendors, and distributors in the retail, restaurant, grocery, and cannabis verticals. Jim has been active in the IT retail channel since 1998, including 11 years as the president of Business Solutions Magazine, six years as an RSPA board member, one term as RSPA chairman of the board, and several years as a business coach for VARs, ISVs, and MSPs. Jim has been recognized as one of the top of the world's top retail influencers by Rethink Retail, a leading Canatech influencer by the Canatech Group, and is regularly requested to speak at industry conferences on SMB best practices. Jim is also the author of two books, The Walk-On Method to Career and Business Success and Hire Like You Just Beat Cancer, and is host of the award-winning RSPA Trusted Advisor podcast. Those are some goals right there. (laughs) (laughs) The RSPA is also the organization that hosts the Retail IT Channel's number one trade show and conference, Retail Now, which is rapidly approaching this July 30th through August 1st. I've been attending Retail Now since 2012, and that is where I've met Jim, as well as many others in the industry. Jim is always full of so much knowledge, and what I think helps in his success is his curiosity and desire to really understand how each person thinks when making decisions. I'm so honored to be having this conversation with Jim today, and I can't wait to dive in. So without further ado, hello, Jim. How are you? Hey, Kate, I'm honored to be here. It's always a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you so much for having me as a guest. Of course. Thank you so much for your time. And I'll go ahead and kind of kick this off because, you know, we've we've seen each other in passing at all these different events. And I was very fortunate to attend RSPA's Inspire Conference for the first time um, in Maui, not a bad place to be, back in January of this year. Um, And to those who are listening or watching who have never attended Inspire, it's a leadership conference, which includes executive focused presentations, group workshops and panel discussions about industry trends, as well as a chance to network with other retail IT channel leaders. Um, When you kicked off Inspire, Jim, you said that the main thing that resellers need to do to remain relevant in retail is to take action. I'm paraphrasing a little bit on no, but obviously not everyone was able to join us at that conference. So I was wondering if maybe you could summarize those actions that you feel that businesses need to take. Sure. No, thank you for asking. And so one thing is, and I've learned over my years, you know, 20 plus now years in the channel is it's hard to say to, even if you just take the slice of VARs and say, all VARs need to do this or all ISVs need to do this. It's hard to give that, that broad, you know, guidance, but some things I will say, and this is part of what we talked about at Inspire, something that any channel company can do. Number one is you have to be proactive now before I think you could afford to be reactive and see where things are going going and maybe be a late adopter. Uh, But because things are moving so quickly, if you're pausing in your business, you're saying, I'm not going to look at doing anything new. I'm not going to study, study new initiatives at this point. You're going to end up being so far behind. You're always playing catch up. So I'd say that'd be action. Number one is being proactive. The other thing is I think you have to have a growth oriented mindset. Um, I'm just talking to an RSP member this afternoon. We've been counseling them for years. Uh, we have a service we call the Customer Health Checkup Merchant Survey. We help them do a survey. And so you really get to know these folks over years and you get to see their customer comments and complimented them on taking the initiative to do that and also doing other things inside of their business. So there's there's being proactive, but also proactive in a growth uh, from a growth standpoint. Don't just say, I'm going to maintain what I have always be thinking about what's next. And that's really where innovation 
comes from. A lot of times, like if you see in, you know, I'm going to sound old to say if you see in the magazines, but now if you see on YouTube videos, right, or anything like that, it's almost like it's portrayed as Eureka, I got this, you know, bolt of lightning struck me and now I'm going to innovate. But the real innovation comes when you have a growth mindset and you're trying new things you're going to test them out. You're going to measure and see how they do and you adapt, right? And so it's try, test, measure, adapt, try, test, measure, adapt over and over and over. And so that's one thing that folks need to do as well. It's not that your original idea has to hit, hit a home run. It's got to move you in the one direction and you just keep adapting along the way until you get to the point where you need to be. And then the last one, I didn't say this at Inspire, but I'll say it now because of the time of the year. This is not the time to skip Retail Now 2023, which you mentioned and said such kind words um, about. Um, you know, as I said, this industry is moving so quickly, you can't skip a year. In the past, I've talked to folks who are like, I go every other year, every three years. I just think things are moving so fast, you can't afford to do that anymore. As you said, you learned firsthand. As we just saw, we finished our own member survey. It's the best place to both learn and find new partners because everybody in the industry is coming together. It's like a 48-hour cram session on the industry. So the two days or, or three days, you know, you're going to have some travel involved. Uh, definitely, definitely worth it. So those would be the actions that I'd recommend, uh, not just VARs, but anybody in our channel needs to take. Well, it's interesting, especially that customer health checkup. And you said that that was something that a partner actually was initiating the customer health checkup. Yeah. So there's a, a service that the RSPA offers uh, to all of our VAR and ISV members at no charge called a customer health checkup. And so the way that we view it is just like in your regular health, it's good to get blood work every year. And if your blood work's boring and it's all good, the doctor's like, good, I'll see you in another year. But if there's anything that shows up that maybe doesn't line up with a prior uh, blood work test, you got to go in and, and dive in to that and see what's going on with your business. So the RSP offers that service, but the members have to opt in in order to do it, right? We developed the survey for them. We've asked these questions uh, to the, the merchants of several VARs and ISVs. So not only do they get their own feedback to see how are, the, how are their customers rating them, what are they saying? We're able to compare their scores against the industry average as well. But it takes some initiative to do that. We have, it's light lifting, you know, for them. It only takes uh, two or three hours for them to invest. They have to set up, you know, we give them the email text. They go and send it out, but they have to review it. But the bigger thing is to overcome your own ego and your own fear about what are my customers going to say? And some folks would rather not hear some of the bad news that they get. But an old boss I used to work for, he said, I like to have my problems in front of me, not clawing me down from behind like a tiger in the jungle. And that's what this survey does, right? It gets the bad news right in front of you so you can go work on it. It also has a great side benefit from a marketing standpoint. You know, the comments that you get from your merchants, some of those things are just absolute gold that you can share with prospects and with other customers in terms of the great service you're providing. So yeah, if anybody's interested, they can just uh, you know reach out to us at the RSPA, uh, any member, again, VAR ISV, no charge to take the customer health checkup merchant survey. Well, I think that's interesting because I'm I'm of the camp too. It's like you it's like you could design a program or put things together, but it's, you know, what does the customer want? If it's, oh, it, listen to what, it's better to listen than to speak. And I always say, I always tell my team, it's like, nobody loves to, loves more than to talk about themselves and to talk about their company. So listen more and talk less. <laughs> yeah. It's almost, you don't even have to make a decision. You get so much data in front of you. It's obvious what the next step should be. And again, that's this member that we just met with. They've done this four years in a row and they know I got to call this person. Oh, I got to call this person. Well, we've already talked to this person, but I clearly need to talk to them again. So there's no substitute for a competent person getting closer to their customers. Absolutely. And I, I know that you, the RSPA in particular, really focuses on focus on fostering those partnerships, which for me is very near and dear to my heart, because even at STAR, I'm the partner development manager, so it's in the name. Um, so I have two questions for you, especially because people, you know, hopefully they do go to retail now, and I'll be talking about that. We'll, we'll come back to that in a minute. But, you know, so two questions are, what are things that businesses should look for in a new partnership? And what should be considered maybe some red flags for those potential candidates? Sure. And uh, if folks are listening to this and they're like, I'm all set with my partners, I'd say that's 
2010 thinking or 1999 thinking, how far you want to go back. It seems like now because of the increasing complexity in the merchant world, it's not just at the point of sale anymore, right? It's point of sale. It's the self-checkout. It's the online ordering. You know, it's everything that goes into that on the channel. You need to present the total solution to that merchant and you're not going to build up all that expertise internally. So everybody really needs partners. That is a big theme. You mentioned Inspire earlier. That was kind of my big takeaway from it is really the need uh, for, for partnership. So like, so what are the things that, um, uh, that, that you should look for in a partner? Um, one I would say is track record um, in terms of, and talking with others that you trust. We had this conversation actually at the RSP board meeting uh, at Inspire, where we were saying, how can we best provide our members to know the landscape of who the partners are. And somebody said, it's not just the list, it's not just a website link, they need the no BS answer of who's a good partner. And so that's part of it is in terms of, you know, finding out the track record from the company, but also checking references, right? That's a key thing to do, references that they give you or references in your community. Hey, have you worked with so-and-so before? How are they to work with? You know, what things should I, I look for? So that's, I say, the first thing is a track record and, you know, some data uh, behind it. But then somebody might be thinking, well, what if I'm a startup, right? And I don't have, you know, that track record. And I know we have a lot of startups that are joining the RSPA. I know Star works with a lot of ISV, you know, new ISVs and startup companies as well. So you have to find, do they have the structure that could be a potential fit for your organization? So ISV would be an example um, of, do they even really care about VARs or do they, or they just want to use you to sell their product and they don't have something set up in terms of a partner program or support program or something of that nature. Um, and we had uh, somebody at uh, the Inspire event who is brand new to the U S well-established in the UK, but they're brand new to the U S and, you know, they're trying to get traction here. And so you'd be able to look at them like technically they're a startup here, but when you talk to them, they can talk about all their reseller experience that they have have uh, over in, in the UK. The other thing that I'd say is um, you have to find if it's a cultural fit, right? If the product lines up and the program lines up, you have to see, are they the kind of people that I'm going to want to work with, that my team is going to want to work with, or is it going to be more combative. Um, I won't mention the name of the company. And in fact, I'm going pre my RSPA days. I'll go back to my uh, business solutions magazine days. We had a, an advertiser sponsor with us. They had lots of money to spend. They spent lots of money. There's a lot that they did with us, but they were rude. They were, um, I'm trying to use non-vulgar words here. We'll just stick with rude. This is a, uh, this with is a that. family friendly show. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they were rude. They were unpredictable. Um, they were dismissive and, and they would always, you know, it almost felt like they were always like holding us over a cliff. If you don't do this thing, I'm going to pull my contract. Right. And it was just like, man, it was not, it's like every time you're engaging with them, you're like, oh, this is difficult. And so you liked the money when it came in, but you really didn't like anything else. And the way that that relationship ended was them hanging up the phone on us when there was something that we didn't see we did wrong at all. We were just having a conversation with them and trying to understand what they did better. And we all thought, well, that's kind of fitting, you know, that it ended that way. So again, look for the culture fit. Just don't get caught up in the dollar signs of the promises of the potential partner. Make sure it's a fit on so many different uh, levels. And a book that I recommend, I'm always happy to, to recommend books. There's a book called Decisive by um, the Heath brothers, Chip and Dan Heath. And it's all about decision making. And so this can help you find the right business partner, the right life partner, the right employee, right? All sorts of, uh, it, it goes really into the decision making process. And it talks about attaining distance before deciding. Don't just get caught up. You talk to this partner one time. It seems great. Let's go and move forward, right? Take some time, but at the same time, don't stop all, right? Gather data, an appropriate amount of data, and then make the move. Don't make it too quick and don't just drag your feet either. So that might've been a longer answer than what you were looking for. But for me, partnerships, right? In terms of that, what's a fit and what's a red flag, it's more complex than it's ever been in the past. And it's more necessary than it's ever been in the past as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that that's um, absolutely, I think that's all really, you kind of covered the red flags as well, as far as like that, you know, it, that toxic type of environment and and the culture fit I think is is super is super important. What do you what, do you need someone who's super responsive or just gives you the tools that you need 
whether it's a portal to log in to see certain information. Um, and then I think you would mention some, you know, the track record. I mean, that's even just finding a new job in the industry. Like every position that I've been able to, I've, I've done very well in my career, but it's all because of knowing people and networking and building that track record and tr getting, you know, working with people and building that trust. Um, so it's I that all good points. It's almost, it's not just finding the partner. It's, it's can be relatable to even, I'm trying to look for something else in the industry. What do you need to do? So. Right. And that's the value of the community IQ, right? You don't have to be on an island making a decision all on your own. And again, that's why the RSP has been, you know, around and thriving for 75 years is these, you know, resellers can turn to each other. The VARs can turn to each other. The ISVs can turn to each other and say, you've been down this path. Like, what do you know? What have you heard uh, about them? Uh, one of the RSP's ISV uh, members, they have a very healthy uh, VAR uh, network. And, you know, I talked to them about what certain regions, what are the qualities they look for? And he said, number one, do I want to have a beer with a person, right? If I talk to them and I'm like, I do not want to have a beer with them. It doesn't matter how much you know money they can bring in for us. I don't want to sign up for all the headaches. And they have the most family-like atmosphere of a partner conference that I've ever seen in uh, my life. It's just really wonderful. But that's because they're intentionally making sure that they have a, a, the right culture fit with all their partners, not just, oh, you're in Utah. Good. You know, come on board because we have a gap in Utah. They're making sure it's the right Utahan, if that's the word, or the right person who serves uh, the Utah region. Yeah, not every partner is a is the is a good partner, and not every order is a good order. <laughs> I've, I've learned yes. I've learned yes. to say no to, to to business in the past, and yes, it, it you know hurts my little heart whenever you don't see that commission check. But at the same time, it's like yeah, I don't know if it would have been worth the stress anyway. So that's okay. Yeah, you have to choose the partners and uh, and customers that are that are right ones for you. Yeah. Well, I want to go, I'm going to kind of switch gears and I'm actually going to go into the retail now because we've been talking about that a lot, um, the event itself. And I mean, obviously I truly love RSVA's retail now because it gives me the chance to not only meet new partners, but connect deeper with existing ones. Uh, a lot of times when I've had sales positions, I'm combining about 20 trips into one. So, and as a family woman, it you know, saves me. <laughs> I can actually be at home with my kids and my husband. Um, but there, you know, you had mentioned it earlier, but there are some resellers and, and, or ISVs listening or watching who may have never attended this event or have been in the past and are just, like you said, just like, well, I'm going to come every three years. So, you know, could you maybe expand a little bit more about what makes retail now so much different from other shows and why should these partners make a point to attend it, even if they've attended it previously? Well, I like how you said that, Kate, in terms of you can have all the meetings all combined into one, you know, area over just a couple of days. I used to say even before the RSP paid me to promote the RSP when I was at Business Solutions and volunteering for the association, I said it's like having a thousand phone calls over a 48 hour period, right? You know how hard it would be to complete a thousand phone calls. You know, it would take you an entire year to do that. You can do that all condensed together. So we always say it's where the industry meets. And that is really the strength of this. It's not an ISV partner conference or distributor partner conference where you're only seeing that slice of the industry. It brings everybody together. So from a reseller ISV perspective, we talked about looking for new partners. It's very much one-stop shopping in order to do that, right? The, the trade show floor, you know, is going to have uh, right around 200 vendors there and they're all channel focused. And so again, great place to be able to do that as opposed to, like you said, having to travel to a whole bunch of different events or surf a bunch of of websites there. So that's one thing. That's kind of, I think, the core thing that makes it different. The other thing is from an education standpoint, there's no sales pitches. We don't have any pay to play. We don't owe any sponsors anything from a sponsor, from a, uh, a speaking standpoint. And then also we make sure it's retail IT VAR and ISV focused, right? So if anybody's playing in, you mentioned the verticals earlier, retail, restaurant, grocery, cannabis, and everything that goes underneath that, we're not getting there and just talking about general trends. We're talking about, and what should VARs do about it? Or what can ISVs do about it? Or you have these successful ISVs on stage talking about how they built a channel or how they partnered with other folks or mistakes they've made. Again, it's hard to get that um, anywhere else 
uh, either. And then a couple other things that I'll say. So for this year, what's going to be different is we're celebrating the 75th anniversary um, of the uh, RSPA. And so it's going to be great to be able to look back, but not just to look back in a nostalgic way, but also how have we adapted to be relevant and to be stronger than we were when we started in 75 years? And then what do we need to do in the next two to three years to, you know, as individual organizations and as a community to be strong for the next 25 years. And two folks who are going to help us do that are going to be on our main stage. Michael LeBlanc is a retail um, expert uh, based out of Toronto. Uh, Jay McBain is a channel ad uh, analyst for Canalys, um, and he's based out of Florida now. He's originally uh, Canadian as well, but they come from outside the retail IT channel. Again, Michael is more retail end user. Jay is more the other side of the channel, the managed services. But we appointed them to the RSPA board a, a, a little over a year ago, and they've been embedded inside of our association for a year. And they're going to share on the main stage, here's what we've seen, here's what we've learned, here are the big trends, and here's what you need to do about it, right? Like you are not going to be able to get that anywhere else whatsoever. Um, and us being able to tie that together uh, for the community. So I'd say there's some things, again, fundamental every year, why retail now is different from other shows. And then this year in particular, some of the specific content that we're going to be presenting. And like I said earlier, since the change, you know, the the, the rate of change has accelerated in the industry post COVID, you just can't afford to skip the event anymore. We've combined it all. You can travel in on Sunday. You can leave Tuesday night, right? So over the course of three days, including travel, you can immerse yourself completely in the show and get everything you need. Like you said, 20 meetings or a thousand phone calls, however you want to look at it, it's going to really move your business forward if you want to, if you have that growth oriented mindset. Yeah, it's, I, I was going to ask you the next thing of what we can expect at Retail Now 2023, but it seems like you kind of covered all those aspects in the 75, 75th anniversary kind of the short-term plan and then the long-term plan. So that's, a you know, it's good information for people to, or for our the partners to look forward to. And then hopefully they reconsider that. Maybe this, maybe this will be a good sales pitch for them to, to make sure that they go. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have yeah, 11 and a half hours on the show floor. Half of the exhibitors last year were ISVs. We're also going to have new this year. We're going to uh, unveil our next gen uh, 40 under 40 rising stars is what we're calling it. We apologize if that tramples on the name of this podcast at all. So if our attorneys have to get together and work that out, you know, yeah, if this is the beginning of some lawsuit, I don't know if you're going to have your uh, uh, attorney zoom in and tell us to cease and desist uh, with that. But no, we're excited for that as well. Again, you know, honoring the past, uh, but then also definitely looking forward to the future and valuing the lessons that we've learned and been taught along the way by the folks who really got this uh, community and got the show going. I'm just, the only thing I'm disappointed in is that you didn't do it a year sooner because I turned <laughs> literally in four days. So I don't qualify. <laughs> I, I just talked to somebody and we haven't announced, you know, we've told everybody who's on the list that they're on the list, but we haven't announced the entire list. We we're just talking to an RSP member before one of our community calls and congratulated him. And he said, man, I'm glad you started it this year because I wouldn't be eligible next year. So sorry that we waited too late uh, for you in order to do it. That's okay. That's okay. Well, I mean, I guess... Another thing I kind of want to touch on, because um, there's been a lot of things going on in the news, and I'm kind of curious, I want to just see what, you know, kind of your thoughts, especially how it's going to be attend at, at, at maybe impacting the channel itself. And maybe this is something that gets talked about at Retail Now. I'm, you know, I don't, I know you might not want to give any spoilers, but there's a lot of talk about the status of the economy. And I was kind of curious about, do you think we have a bumpy road ahead? And maybe what should resellers and, and ISVs and MSPs anticipate and how can they weather the storm? Uh, so first, I am not much for predictions. The last time I gave a hard and fast definitive uh, prediction was probably going back 20 years ago about a college basketball game, a local rivalry. And somebody asked me, um, they had me on as a, as a radio guest and my alma mater, uh, the women's basketball team was like 18 and three. They were playing the arch rival who was O and 21 and their head coach was named Bo. And so we would say they were Bo and 21. I'm like, I guarantee I knew my alma mater is going to win that game. Sure enough, they lost by double digits. So I'm like, I'm never predicting anything again. Like it was the most certain thing in the world. So, um, and then also from an economic standpoint, you know, half the economists who spend, you know, 40, 50, 60 hours a week doing this, they don't really know what's around the corner. But what I can tell you is based on our conversations with members, um, 
everybody's worried from an economic standpoint, but the only folks we've seen doing any layoffs are really the giant companies. And so we've seen folks say like, I'm worried, but how are you doing? I'm doing pretty, pretty good. Like 22 was a strong year or my best year. How's 23? And actually shaping up to be as good as 22 or somewhere in the neighborhood, but they're worried about, uh, about everybody else. But I just uh, attended the channel partners conference, which is more on the managed services side of the world. And they had somebody who's focused on the channel from an economy standpoint. And I thought he framed it up. It, what he said from a data standpoint aligned with a lot of what I've been hearing in terms of the first half of 23 is going to be difficult. It's going to be slow compared to the last couple of years because of this worry. A lot of folks are not saying no, but they're saying wait. And so he's saying the first half of 23, if you're looking out over the next three years, first half is going to be the roughest. The second half, he said, is going to be slightly better. There's still people who are going to be nervous in that standpoint. But he was telling everybody, be ready to seize growth in 2024 and 2025. And so that was really his overall view. And I'd say that really aligns with what I've been hearing uh, with folks in terms of if there is a recession, if there's one going on right now, or if there is one, it's not going to be like the one that we just had during COVID or the one that we had during 09, that deep of a drop. And it really seems from an SMB standpoint, those folks have been continuing to be strong as long as their company on its own uh, is strong as well. And again, the numbers just keep coming out and inflation um, has, I don't know if receded is the right word or just not as, you know, moved as fast uh, from an inflationary standpoint. Uh, so there are a lot of positive signs from an economic standpoint, but there is that worry that we've seen causing folks just to be a little nervous. And and I understand it completely of not to go all in um, because they're nervous about that. So I don't know if that answers your question directly. I'm not going to give some definitive, here's exactly what's going to happen because I don't have a crystal ball, uh, but that's what we've been hearing from our members. And then again, uh, and it aligns with what I heard at that channel partners conference. No, I, I think you answered the question. I, I think what it is, is that there are, you know, there's there's talk about it. So it's like you kind of talk about the elephant in the room and the trends. And I think you, it's and I've, I've heard both sides of the or both, I've seen both sides of the coin. But what one of the things that I'm thinking is you keep talking about how fast the technology is moving even now, I mean, it's just moving even faster, faster, faster. I mean, what you what we talked about in 2022 now is is almost obsolete. Um, and it's one of those things that I don't think even the end users like they it's from a technology standpoint, they have to invest. They have to go ahead and invest in the technology that they need to continue to be relevant for the the actual consumers. But do you think? Yeah, that I would say yes. And the good news for folks in our world right, the technology solution providers, the biggest crunch that most organizations are having right now, especially in, you know, retail, restaurant, grocery is labor. And what can solve their labor shortage? Technology. So even if there's macroeconomic uncertainty or bumpiness, you're going to have these folks who are saying, yeah, I'm not going to spend money there, but I'm going to spend money here in a self-serve kiosk or technology that makes things more efficient because I can't find as many employees. And if I can keep that revenue high, uh, but keep my labor expense low, but I can keep the, you know, the, the, the lights on and keep people showing up for work and have the technology to fill in that gap, that is a real need at this point. It's not just, you know, um, like uh, curbside service. That was seen before the pandemic as something that Vars would be like, please, I beg you to do this, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Restaurant owner. And then once the pandemic hit, we absolutely need that. So they know they need those things. And that's where I think especially anything under the self label, if you're providing that as a solution provider, as a VAR, you're going to have folks who are interested uh, in doing that. Because again, the labor is overriding everything else from what we're seeing uh, in the merchant space. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. And I, I just kind of, I thought it'd be nice. It, it's people are talking about it. Makes sense to kind of bring it up and discuss sure. it. Um, well, I know I learned a lot from you today, Jim, and I really truly enjoyed the conversation and I'm sure I, everyone will gain something. But before I let you go, I just have one more question. What are you most excited about or hoping to see unfold in the future of the channel? Uh, good question. Um, that, that's, I guess, one thing. I'm glad you're asking it that way, because in the business world, there's always a lot to be nervous 
about, right? And so what to be excited about and look from a positive standpoint. Um, I kind of alluded to it earlier where we talked about the RSP has been adapting for 75 years. Our industry has been adapting for 75 years. Really curious to see what's next. And there was a period of time where in this industry, what's next was like the next generation pole display, right? Or something like that. Like it wasn't something that was like, ooh, I didn't see that one coming. So I'm really interested to see how does our ecosystem work together? Back to your question about partnerships, right? I know you guys do a ton with ISVs, you know, how are those ISVs working together? What solutions are they going to come up with? How are they going to work with the channel partners to bring a, a more interesting uh, solution to the SMB space of the market? And can these SMB merchants actually operate better than these large big box organizations because the technology has come downstream, the collaboration is there. Um, and so we're super interested in seeing that. We're interested in seeing VARs who are adding software um, we're interested in seeing these uh, software developers who are going directly when they're starting off uh, to the merchants. And then how do the vendors and distributors support this ever-changing ecosystem? So that's why I'd say it's most interesting to me I do, that I can't say for certain, oh, I know exactly what it's going to look like uh, in two years. So that's pretty, it can be daunting, but it's also very exciting as well. And again, I have faith in this channel. They've been adapting for, again, 75 years officially from an RSPA uh, standpoint. And as much as things have been accelerating the last several years, VARs and ISVs that we've seen, they've been up to the challenge every single time. So I have faith uh, in those folks and uh, look forward to seeing the the magic that they work uh, going forward, vendors like Star, uh, ISVs, VARs, distributors, uh, everybody alike working together. Really looking forward to seeing uh, what magic they come up with. Wonderful, that's awesome. I'm I'm excited to see all those things, Jimmy. Everybody's like, I that could be a whole podcast in itself. And I'm like, well, you know, maybe we just collect a couple different ones and we do one of those. So, amen. I, I you know, now is the time. If you have anything that you want to kind of plug in about you or your company, although you've talked a lot about RSPA and the benefits, um, but maybe where's a good place for people to connect with you or your team? Yeah, the uh, email to remember is membership at gorspa.org. If you're a current member and you have any needs, you can reach out to that. Though we do have dedicated member services managers who are always reaching out to our members. And if you're uh, you're, if you're serious about growth in the retail IT channel, just email membership at gorspa.org. And again, we have a group that's really willing to, to help. Uh, we have a, a small but mighty team of 10 uh, full-time employees. Um, and again, we really look to serve the VARs, the ISVs, the vendors, and the distributors. And again, make sure you block out on your calendar July 30th uh, through August 1st. Uh, retail now, 2023 at the Gaylord Palms in Orlando. Again, our marketing uh, uh, team would be upset if I didn't say it's where the industry meets. Uh, <laughs> and you can just find that on the RSP website at gorspa.org forward slash retail now. So definitely looking forward to that event, celebrating 75 years, uh, seeing you and the star team and like 1600 of our friends, uh, if not more. Awesome. Well, I'm totally looking forward to it. Thank you so much for your time today, Jim. There you have it. Jim has given us some really great nuggets of wisdom regarding actions for partners to take to be successful moving forward, uh, the importance of being involved in the RSPA and kind of a snapshot of what to expect at this year's Retail Now. Jim, again, I want to thank you so much for your insight and to all our listeners out there. Thank you so much. Uh, for more STAR, visit us at www.starmicronics.com where we also have a super informative blog or you can follow us on social media don't forget to subscribe and please leave us a review um, we love to hear from you all and that's it for this episode of the rising stars podcast i'm kate arara and i'll see you next time